If you look at what's going on in the Washington state legislature, you see a lot of things that are pro-criminal and not so much that are pro-public safety as part of House Bill 1994. I find that number ironic because that is the same year we had our last record homicides until this year. Any defendant in a misdemeanor or gross misdemeanor case could request a halt in their prosecution if the defendant agrees to certain court-ordered stipulations and waivers, and if they comply with a specific treatment plan and conditions. Now, this is what we've been doing in Seattle for years. It didn't work. We luckily now have a city attorney who's turned things around and we're not doing that kind of stuff as much as we used to. We're trying to actually prosecute offenders, make sure they go to jail. And this thing seems like a step in the absolute wrong direction. Joining me now on the KVI studio line, Seattle City Attorney Ann Davidson. Thank you so much for being with us today. Thanks for having me, Ari. No problem. So did anybody talk to you before they started doing this legislation or was this something that just came up and you said, wait a minute, I've been working so hard to undo this in Washington's biggest city? That is an interesting question. Uh, I I do have team who track things, and this was flagged to me through that mechanism. So I decided it's really important to talk about it because it's specifically involving misdemeanor crime, which of which I prosecute within the city of Seattle's jurisdictional lines. And to me, it does uh, start to it, it is undercutting the criminal justice system. So I needed to speak out on that. Gotcha. So what are your feelings on this bill? I mean, you've been very vocal about this, about opposing this thing. The question is, is anybody in Washington state legislature listening to it or do they think, well, it just hasn't been done right yet? Um, there are some some common sense voices that are listening to reason, because when you start to talk about why I talk about victims and that they never asked to be part of the criminal justice system, uh, but yet have to go through this after they've been harmed, it's a significant thing. And this bill still has, even with amendments, uh, it does include a, a large swath of crimes that would really leave victims, uh, I think, unaddressed. And to remove prosecutors from the dialogue, from the, from the adversarial system that's designed to where we speak for victims and society as a whole, because this is the law, uh, we are supposed to present that case and to put it in uh, outside of our uh, ability to have a conversation on that as well it is not helpful for public safety. We have a more moderate city council now, and they ran on a public safety platform. Granted, they've only been in office a couple of weeks now. But have you had a conversation with any of them about this and about them possibly speaking out as well about something like this? Um, I've not, I've not, I don't, I can't talk about what I have and haven't talked about with, with clients, but what it's important to know is I agree with a lot of their comments about public safety, but because that's what is what we're hearing from, from everyday people, uh, from, from all areas of our city and all types of neighborhoods and all types of situations. Um, and people of color are often victims, uh, people that are unhoused are often victims, business owners are, are victims, everyday people walking on the street to transportation are victims. So if you're sadly going to be a victim of crime, it's likely you'll be the victim of a misdemeanor crime because that's 80% of the crime that's happening. Uh, and so this is significant and it should matter and it shouldn't just matter, uh, sadly, if you do become a crime victim, it should matter to all of us. Absolutely. We're talking with Seattle City Attorney Ann Davidson, looking at your record and what's been going on with actually prosecuting crime, which was a change of pace from your predecessor. So we look and we see that a lot of these crime numbers are actually starting to go down with regard to misdemeanors and stuff. Looking that you're on the right path right now, when you talk to the victims, when you talk to the, the people who have these cases, it's not saying you don't divert anybody to certain kinds of treatment depending on the case, but it's saying that somebody who's a prolific offender doesn't necessarily get diverted as was, was happening in the past. That's precisely right, Ari. Uh, that's why we, I created the Hydalizer Initiative is to, to be able to use data in a strategic way to, to see who are, is engaged in repeat frequent criminal activity. And again, in House Bill 1994, it does not have any carve out for somebody. Someone with 30 priors could get the same ability to halt prosecution and take this these conditions, the judicial diversion, uh, without without any uh, without any other uh, impact on what they can do. So it does not have any ability to look at what has somebody been doing in our community, uh, and that's what why I'm building the continuum. So we do have alternatives that are appropriate when someone is just starting to engage in criminal activity. And I've actually created more of those programs, but we want to have the continuum of prosecution so that we then are able to look at, is this the right message to provide for somebody? Should they be uh, going through a, an alternative 
not if they've got several priors uh, and we're seeing them yet again. That's where we look at the high laser criteria and are matching that with uh, with traditional prosecution as it should be. We're talking with Seattle City Attorney Ann Davidson. Now, is there a specific program that has been the most successful, in your opinion, is a combination of programs? Is it something, because we look for solutions here on the show, is it something you could say, hey, legislature, why don't we try this instead? Well, I also appreciate that question because um, I think that a lot of us here in the space aren't going to come up with brand new things that haven't been tried in a variety of different ways. But I guess what I see is the difference from, from my view of what wasn't happening is simply something that didn't cost any money and it didn't require a lot of personnel. It simply was just being willing to talk to others in the public safety partnership. And uh, to open up those lines of communication with Seattle Police Department from my end and as well with the King County Prosecuting Attorney's Office so that there was some cl collaborative work that was going on around the high, high utilizer initiative criteria. Um, pardon me, I have a little bit of a head cold, so my enunciation is is maybe not so great. We both have today. kids. It's OK. They're they're dishes. <laughs> I get it. Don't worry about it. Yeah. yeah. But that seems to have been the missing piece uh, is just being willing to talk to people and have the data to to show it objectively, whether or not what the response that was happening is actually working. And now to see that it is. And that seems to be what a lot of people are are uh, wanting to talk to me about and how can they use that and replicate that in other spaces. Gotcha. In the last few minutes we have with Seattle City Attorney Ann Davidson, switching gears for a minute, the mayor announced a hiring freeze because the city's fi facing financial difficulties. However, I did notice that there's been a lot of lawsuits against the city that predate your time. There's been a lot that were filed as a result of the autonomous zone, and you came into office after all that kind of stuff. Is the city expecting more? Because I saw that line item in the budget went up. Um, I, well, I certainly can't speak on pending litigation, but if you're talking about past settlements that are now part of the public record, um, you know, it is what you described. Uh, I walk into the situation as they are midstream and make decisions based upon what the, how things are at the moment, uh, things that I had no part of in decision making or advising, and that's how we have to uh, handle the situations at, at the time. Uh, so, um it's a difficult decision. It's not uh, an area that is um, easy to explain because I'm not able to speak about things. But uh, using my my tenets of value, which is uh, public safety has always been the number one thing for me and being a good steward of public dollars is immensely important to me. So my decisions uh, it will include those things uh, and make best decisions that I think I can given the situation. Just before we let you go, you've been a breath of fresh air around Seattle City Hall and the city. And I know that when you get a new job, it sometimes takes time to get it the way you want it to be. Do you look and you see a light at the end of the tunnel? Do you go, OK, this is working out the way I want it to work out. This is going the way it is. Where's areas I can improve? Are we on the right track right now? I think we are headed in the right way. I still have a lot to do uh, because, again, I'm one member of the public safety circle as I talk about it. Um, I use the analogy of a track team with the baton passing it off, uh, and we are the second leg of that. We only uh, get involved with public safety unless and until we get that referral from Seattle police, uh, and then we can look at it as to whether or not we should file charges. We make recommendations, uh, and then the court uh, is the next step on that. And so. Uh, I can only do so much as one person, but I still think that it makes a difference uh, when you have new eyes on the same situation and new people who are willing to talk uh, and talk honestly about what's happening and provide data for the public and for me to make those decisions. Uh, so I still think I've got a lot to do um, and it's not quite where I want it to be, but I certainly am thankful that we've been able to be impactful in a positive way so far and I only want to continue to do that. Well, thank you so much for your hard work on behalf of all of us who live here in Seattle. I definitely see the light at the end of the tunnel. How long it takes to get there is a different story, but at least we do see that you can actually see it in the distance. Seattle City Attorney Ann Davidson, thank you so much for joining us today. Really do appreciate it. Thank you so much for having me, Ari. Always a pleasure. we got a whole lot more to discuss as the show continues. You're listening to the Ari Hoffman Show on Talk Radio 570 KVI.